Joby Warwick, a national security reporter for The Washington Post, author of the fascinating book, Black Flags, The Rise of ISIS. Also with us is Steve Hall, former CIA chief of Russia operations. Steve, what do you make of Vladimir Putin's comments today? You know, not a big surprise, Anderson. He's going to try to make that Ukraine connection, uh, even though he has to sort of admit that it does appear to have been ISIS-K that was involved. Um, I think he's looking forward to trying to figure out how to increase conscription and to energize, you know, the Russian populace, if such a thing is possible, uh, to support his war against Ukraine. And, and, and this is the best way to do it. That is not ruling out Ukraine, saying there was a window for these people, asking, like, who was really behind this? And he hopes, again, to, to get more support for his continued invasion efforts uh, in Ukraine, I think. Yeah, Joby, one of the things that Putin said today, he said, quote, are radical and terrorist linked to Islamist organizations really interested in striking Russia, which stands for a fair solution to the exacerbated conflict in the Middle East, end quote. Um, I assume the answer is yes, that they are interested. I mean, why, in your opinion, is ISIS-K uh, interested in striking inside Russia? Yeah, they are very interested. Uh, these are equal opportunity haters, but they really, really hate the Russians most of all. And this is a hatred that goes back decades. It dates back to the early Afghan wars in the 80s, to the Chechen uh, you know, uprising in Chechnya and in, in southern Russia, and more recently to the Syrian campaign. Russia intervened on behalf of Syria's dictator, we have to remember, fighting Syrian rebels who included a lot of these militant groups. And it was because of Russia, essentially, that, uh, that, that uh, Syria won. And, and these groups were defeated. And so they don't forget this. They talk about it a lot in their social media. They, they're vowing to go back and get the Russians and make them pay. And this just, just looks like one step out of perhaps many. I mean, Steve, you know, we see these videos of these, uh, the accused attackers in court and those videos that have been released of their arrests. I mean, an ear being cut off by Russian forces. It's, what does it say about, I mean, for the fact that Russian authorities would release those videos that they are, proud, I guess, of those videos. It says a lot about them. Yeah, I think there's a couple of things. First of all, you know, I like to talk a lot about the difference in values between what's going on in Russia and what's going on in the West. Um, even though if something like this happened in the United States, there would certainly be, or, or anywhere else in the West, there would certainly be people who would be who would be saying eye for an eye and, you know, they deserve whatever they get, that sort of thing. But that's not really civilized society. Civilized society is rule of law and treating suspects, even if you're pretty sure who they are, uh, with some degree of you know, humanity and respect, which is totally uh, you know, not understood, not followed. There is no rule of law in Russia. I think if you ask most Russians on the streets if these guys got the, got the treatment that they got while they were in interrogation, I think there'd be probably a lot of support among the Russian people. It's just a different way of looking at it. Russia is a very different place. They are proud of it. Joby, I mean, knowing how ISIS uses video and social media, would they use the videos of the attack? I mean, they would certainly use the videos of the attack to promote themselves. I'm wondering how the videos of the alleged attackers being, you know, having their ear cut off and being beaten, uh, how that would be used. Oh, it'll definitely be you know, ISIS propaganda. It's perfect fodder for that. And they'll talk about these guys as martyrs and, and the abuses uh, which, which the Russians, the infidels, inflicted on them. I have a feeling that the, the next group of uh, you know, ISIS-K volunteers who try to take on a mission, mission like this will try very hard not to be survivors because one could only imagine if we've seen these videos what comes next for those four individuals. But it's, uh, it's something that will be echoed and repeated by, by the Islamic State and its affiliates around the world because they do want to get mileage out of this. And Joby, just in terms of ISIS-K, I mean, what are their capabilities? Um, you know, these guys are, the, these alleged attackers who are in custody, I, I believe are all from Tajikistan. Would they have, I mean, would they have already been in Russia and just radicalized inside Russia or would they have been sent into Russia? So we'll have to see, like trace back where they, you know, where they ultimately got their instructions and, and, and who coached them. They didn't have a lot of training, apparently, just by the way this was carried off. It was fairly clumsy in many ways. So these weren't professional soldiers. But what we do know about ISIS-K in recent years is they've gone from being a group that was really focused on the Taliban, really focused on the Afghan struggle, to being one that is, is probably, among all the ISIS groups, the one that's most focused right now on external operations, which means attacks overseas. They really want to strike targets in places like Russia, as they have done in the last few days. They went after Iranian targets, as we remember back in January, and they have a long list of other plots and, and, and plans, including attacks against Westerners, against the United States. And we've seen this because of intel intercepts showing 
specifically they were planning attacks. They didn't have the the networks to carry them out, but they do have this this aspiration and, and goal to ultimately attack us too. Steve, do you expect to see, I mean, military retaliation by Russia against ISIS-K, or do you think they'll just try to focus this on Ukraine, to your point? I think they'll try to try to focus it mostly on Ukraine and again, try to energize. And, uh, you know, if there's going to be an increased uh, conscription call up, they're going to try to say, well, this is this is the kind of horrific thing that we're fighting against. Um, it's, it is interesting that these guys were Tajiks. It's interesting because what happens in Russia is there's a lot of Central Asian uh, sort of seasonal labor that happens. Mm -hmm. A lot of people come in from Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan uh, to do menial jobs. And they're, they're looked down upon uh, by most of Russian society that, and they do the, you know, the, the, the nastiest work in Moscow. But it is an easy way uh, to get into Russia from the Central Asian uh, republics, formerly part of the Soviet Union. They can get a work visa very easily. So if you're a terrorist looking for a way to get in a police state, an authoritarian state like Russia, this is the way to do it. And so that part, at least, was pretty smart. And Joby, I mean, ISIS hasn't gotten a lot of attention, but I mean, what's happening in, uh, you know, we're seeing affiliate groups in, particularly in, in West Africa, really gain territory and be able to hold territory. Yeah, and it, we haven't really been paying attention to this in the West, but it's it's been quite alarming. Obviously, we're, we're focused on, on Gaza and on the fight in Ukraine, but very gradually, but steadily, these groups have been gaining strength, particularly in Africa. You see in Mali, for example, in, in, in North Central Africa, uh, groups taking over territory again, holding and, and, and uh, controlling towns and fighting off government forces who come after them. The same is true in parts of even Somalia, down the southeastern coast, Mozambique. So it's, it's, it's a phenomenon. And we even see in the old heartland of the, of the Islamic State, some return to uh, at least ability to, to carry out small scale attacks mm. and aspirations to knock over prisons and, and free prisoners and things like that. So the, they've, they've disappeared from the headlines to some extent, they have not gone away. Right, Joby Warwick, Steve Hall, thanks so much.